Good evening and welcome to CYC News for today, the 8th of March 2015 AD and the 29th of Amshir, 1731 AM. I'm Susie Michael. In today's headlines, His Holiness Pope Tawadros II visits the families of the 21 martyrs of faith and homeland. Survivor from a Syrian massacre says insurgents burn churches and broke crosses. Russian Foreign Minister says UNEU must act to protect Christians. Prince of Wales donates money to the families of the Coptic martyrs of Libya. And a Canadian study into the origins of the universe claims that the Big Bang Theory is baseless and cannot be reconciled. His Holiness Pope Tawadros II went to El Minya in order to visit the families of the 21 Egyptian Christians who were martyred in Libya, as he headed a liturgy in the Church of the Four Evangelists in the Archbishopric of the New Testament in Salamort. His Grace Bishop of Vontinos, General Bishop of Salamort, His Grace Bishop Demetrius, General Bishop of Malawi, and many other bishops and all priests of El Minya Diocese participated with His Holiness in the Divine Liturgy that was attended by a great number of people. His Holiness also consecrated a cathedral that is located in a monastery that is named after St. Ava Vina or Abufana in Malawi. ISIS militants burned houses, churches and destroyed crosses, claimed Edward Adam, one of the survivors from the Assyrian massacre by Daesh in Syria's al Hasaka province. He added in an interview with the Lebanon Debate website on Thursday that he lived in the Assyrian diocese in al Hasika since he was a child. He woke up at dawn on Monday because of the sounds of shells and guns in Tel Damanchish. He knew that the gunmen were approaching. He knew that his fate with his family will not be better than the fate of other Christians. He continued, I left my luggage, house and land and took my wife five children and seven other relatives. He continued, I lost all contacts with the villagers. The city became like a ghost town. People left their homes for fear of an inevitable attack by Daesh. They tried to avoid any Kurdish Daesh collision, like the scenario that happened in Mosul. He said they learned that the Kabur guards, consisting of young Assyrians, faced ISIS militants. About 10 of the guards were killed in the clashes. Adam said, quote, the gunmen attacked and buried churches and homes and broke down the crosses. In a related context, one of the observers told Lebanon to debate, quote, Five Assyrian martyrs are still missing. They may be trapped under the Kalsh's fire. The burned churches were the church of Kabur Shamia, another church, Tel Hormuz, and a third church in Tel Al Jazeera. In a counter-terrorism seminar held in Assam Faris Centre for Lebanon in Beirut, Habib Afram, president of the Syriac League, said that no spirit or light will be in the Middle East without Christians. The seminar condemned the recent beheading of Coptic Egyptians in Libya, and Egyptian ambassador to Lebanon Mohammed Badir el-Din Sayed also participated in the seminar. Afram added that the Middle East Christians should not be orphans of the region or be slaughtered on air. He mentioned that Christian's legacy is not crying, wailing, tense relief or compassion generation. He said what Christians do not wait for is a barge to protect them, human intervention or visas. According to El Nashra website, President of the Syriac League said that Christians are quote, sugar and salt, unquote, of the Middle East. He said that Christians do not praise previous civilizations nor weep over the ruins. He went on saying, Christians persevere in openness, love, thoughts, knowledge, universities, literature and art are a part and parcel of Renaissance and modernity of the East. He mentioned that they are also part of life's message that makes persons' dignity and rights priorities in any public affair. Ambassador to Lebanon, Mohammed Badir al-Din Sayed, said that terrorism streams from one root and origin, which is the Muslim Brotherhood. He stressed the necessity of confrontation of all kinds of terrorism. The ambassador told MCN that Christians and Muslims should adhere to unity to confront this threat and they should not think even for a moment about emigration. He mentioned that Libya will represent a dangerous threat if it turns into a hotbed of terrorists. He added that the decision presented by Arab League to the Security Council concerning Libya has not been withdrawn. Information Minister Dr Omar al Quara said Qatar and Turkey support terrorism in the Arab region and fund armed groups to control the region and to achieve their interests. He added in an interview with El Balboa News on Thursday, Qatar is described as an enemy state because of all its practices. It has diverged from the Arab reality. 
He stressed that terrorism targets Egypt in particular because its fall means the fall of the entire Arab region. Al Qaira welcomed the invitation of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to form a joint Arab force to intervene rapidly and face threats against the Arab world. The Muslim Brotherhood are the cause of all the Libyan crisis now, he said. He continued, they were and will remain an unpatriotic group. They seek power and money and are against the institution. Their affiliation and obedience are in the first place for their organisation rather than the state. Head of Interpol Foundation Elias Murr presented an integrated project prepared by Interpol in order to protect religious heritage to Pope Francis I on Wednesday. Elias met Pope Francis I and the Vatican Secretary of State Cardinal Pietro Parolin at the Vatican where they discussed the dangers facing Christians in the Orient. They sought a means of cooperation with the Vatican to protect the religious heritage of the world through a strategic plan set by the Interpol in this regard. The project will be studied as soon as possible, said Almer following the meeting. He added the goal was to create a joint mechanism between Interpol and the Vatican to achieve the objectives of this project, which Cardinal Parolin expressed a great interest. He continued, this project, protecting the religious heritage, is not linked to a single sect but aims to protect the heritage of all religions in the entire world. The Interpol gives the project a great interest. Mur added, the meeting also broached the Christian situation in the East and the means to face terrorism, threatening the life of the region's residents in general and that of Christians of the East in particular, leading them to migrate, voiding the area of its sons and daughters and threatening a history of coexistence, cultural and human heritage. Mur concluded, we also discussed the Lebanese situation and the danger caused by the presidential vacuum, and we agreed to pursue contacts about these dossiers. The Archbishop of Tunis has vowed to stay put to serve Christians in Libya. Archbishop Ilario Antoniazzi said, I will not leave Libya as long as there is one Christian in the country. In an interview with the Italian department at the Vatican Radio, the Catholic Archbishop added that the situation in Libya is quite very tragic and Christians and their bishops are facing daily risks. Archbishop Antoniazzi noted that Christians are bearing witness in Morocco, Algeria and Tunisia, where they engage in religious activities in churches. The Archbishop added the local churches are generously welcoming many foreigners, including students who come to study in universities in North Africa and workers who stay in these countries under temporary work contracts. As for the risks in Tunisia by the Islamic State, Archbishop Antoniazzi said the situation there is calm and there is no imminent danger, although Tunisia shares a border with Libya. He said that the fighters of this terrorist organisation have tried to enter the Tunisian territory recently and four army members died in armed clashes between the organisation and the Tunisian troops. The Archbishop said he is concerned that terrorist elements may enter the Tunisian territory and form terrorist cells within the Tunisian society, which may be dangerous in the future. When asked about the importance of interreligious dialogue, especially between Catholics and Muslims, which is underscored by Pope Francis, the Archbishop of Tunis said, this dialogue is essential. Christians live there in a Muslim environment who appreciate the work they are doing in the community through Caritas, schools and other institutions. <laughs>
The Nusra Front has been listed as a terrorist organisation by the United States. Crimes committed against Christians in the Middle East are tantamount to genocide, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said on Monday, joining other diplomats in calling for action from the United Nations and European Union. According to Interfax Religion, Lavrov called on international organisations including the UN, UNESCO and the Council of Europe to pay attention to the persecution of Christians. The minister addressed a high-level meeting in Geneva which focused on the protection of Christians. We welcome the efforts of the OSCE, Organisation for Security and Cooperation in Europe, which has already held a conference on countering Islamophobia and anti-Semitism and is preparing another one on Christianophobia, Lavrov said. We are calling for more attention to be paid to these issues by the UN, UNESCO and the Council of Europe and be included in the framework of the Dialogue of Civilizations. Like other minorities, Christians have been the target of brutal violence waged by jihadists in countries such as Libya and Syria, reported the AFP on Monday. It is hopeful that the current high-level event in Geneva on the problem of persecuted Christians, the minister was quoted saying it will be an important stage in mobilising collective efforts of the global community to protect the rights of believers and religious values. The crimes perpetrated by the Islamic State and other extremist groups against Christians in the Middle East bear all the hallmarks of genocide as per 1948 convention, Lavrov said. According to the AFP, Lavrov said on the sidelines of the main annual session of the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, there are awful crimes, Christians are killed, they are burned alive, 21 Egyptian cops have been beheaded in Libya. All these are signs of genocide following the definition of the UN. He added that Christians were also persecuted in Ukraine, where three priests have been killed and many have fled to Russia. And to some heartwarming news, the Prince of Wales, Prince Charles, has written to His Holiness Pope Toadras II to express his sorrow at the murders by ISIS on the 21 Coptic martyrs of Libya. Prince Charles has also donated money to the families of the Coptic martyrs. The Prince of Wales was responding to the When Left Behind appeal launched by British Coptic Bishop Angelos to help the children of the 21 men. 20 of them Egyptian Christians, the other believed to be a Ghanaian. The prince also wrote personal letters of condolences to Coptic Pope Toadros and Bishop Angelus, who is the general bishop of the Coptic Orthodox Church in Britain, following the murder of the men. The amount the prince donated to the men's families has not been specified. Last year he contributed to aid to the Church in Needs campaign to help Iraqi and Syrian Christians. In December 2013, the Prince of Wales visited the Coptic Orthodox Church Centre in Stevenage. The Most Reverend Justin Welby, Archbishop of Canterbury, also offered his condolences to Bishop Angelos during a visit to the Coptic Orthodox Church Centre last month and endorsed the appeal with a video message. Bishop Angelos launched the When Left Behind appeal at a memorial service in London last month, where he spoke of the immense courage, strength and dignity shown by those who lost their lives in Libya, saying, As we mourn with the families of those who died, we also rejoice in the faithful conviction, strength, dignity and bravery of these men, these fathers, brothers, uncles and sons who will never be forgotten. Bishop Angelos invited all to contribute to the appeal, saying, These young men were breadwinners for their families, and their loss will not only rob them of the joy of their presence, but will leave a significant financial void in an already impoverished community. I am thankful to His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, His Grace, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Right Honourable David Cameron, and so many more who have already expressed their support and solidarity with the families who are left behind with the Coptic faithful around the world. A study published by the Canadian University of Lethbridge into the origins of the universe claims that the Big Bang Theory is baseless and cannot be reconciled. The report's co-author, Soraya Das, goes on to say that the age of the universe could be infinite. The study looked into the existence of what is known as singularity, the theory that all matter that exists today was once squished into an infinitely dense, infinitely tiny, ultra-hot point which then exploded, giving life to the universe. 
The report's authors claim that two principles that underpin the Big Bang theory cannot coexist. These are Einstein's theory of general relativity and Ray Chilkhuri's equation which predicts whether the tra trajectory of something will converge or diverge over time. According to the study in Einstein's formulation, the laws of physics actually break before the singularity is reached, but scientists extrapolate backwards as if the physics equation still hold, which is not true. American billionaire and co-founder of Microsoft, Paul Allen, has this week claimed another title. He has found the sunken World War II Japanese battleship Muhashish, which sank in 1944. Allen had taken his superyacht My Octopus out for a search, complete with a search sonar and remote operated submersible. He tweeted that he had found the wreck on the seabed one kilometre below sea level, 71 years after it was sunk in the closing months of World War II. The battleship had 41 centimetre thick hardened steel armour and guns that could fire 1.5 tonne shells. It was the biggest and most feared battleship ever built. More than a thousand of the ship's crew lost their lives when it sank um, under an unrelenting air attack during the Battle of Liat in the Philippines in October 1944. And finally, the Australian Egyptian Council Forum, or AECF, represents the Egyptian community interests in New South Wales, Australia. And on Sunday, the 8th of March, they proudly held the 15th annual Egyptian Cultural Festival. The festival took place in the beautiful Tumbalong Park in Darling Harbour, one of Sydney's most popular places. The Egyptian Cultural Festival aimed to highlight many aspects of the Egyptian culture, including arts, music and folk dancing in open-air atmosphere. There were around 30 information and exhibiting stalls, including service to the community, handicrafts, artefacts, foods, beverage stalls, plus so many other traditional and cultural activities. The event also promoted tourists, commercial and cultural activities, and the program of this year was the biggest ever held over the past 15 years. There were camel rides, Imad Nosra and his Arabic musical band, a number of prominent and the best available Arabic entertainers and singers, two groups of the best in belly dancing in Australia, and for the first time this year, the famous New South Wales Police Band was performing at the festival, as well as the great Analeas Arabic Choir. It was a wonderful day enjoyed by all the Egyptian people of Sydney, Australia. And that's all for CYC News. Stay tuned for more Christian content on CYC. I'm Susie from the CYC Studios in Sydney, Australia. Good night and God bless. <laughs>